From for designers of such gorgeous ships as the Alliance Chieftain, Crusader and Challenger, we're looking at, well it's not really much to look at, this is Lacon's Type 6 transporter, or at least it's the Type 6.1, the original Type 6 had to be recalled by Lacon due to issues of excess heat, which is a bit of a pity really, they didn't do a similar recall on the Type 7, but that's a, uh, that's a subject for another day. Regardless though, this is Lacon's attempt at a medium cargo ship which they've been producing since 3200. It's a design that's well over 100 years old and it's praised for its reliability, ease of maintenance, and it may not be the best looking or the most imaginative looking ship you'll come across, but at least it's practical. Lacon designed this ship with the journey in mind and went to some efforts making it good at doing what it was designed to do and not by compromising it to make it look pretty. And that's something I can respect, it's rare a manufacturer makes something with a single goal in mind and manages to follow through with it. I will mention one issue right off the bat. The Type 6 is a medium ship, but if we look at some of the other ships that land on the smaller pads, the Dolphin is longer, the Cobra is wider. In fact, the only reason that the Type 6 can't land on the small pad is down to its height, and it's not even over by that much, it's about a metre. It seems to me that Lacon would have captured a bigger corner of the market if they just reduced the height and bulked out the other dimensions, then you'd have the largest capacity small ship on the market. As far as the cockpit goes, you can see that Lacon went to some effort to make their budget transporter comfortable inside. Looking out of the pilot's chair, the external view is fantastic. You're essentially sitting on a platform sticking out from the front of the ship with a glass bubble surrounding you and it really lets you take in the scenery around you. Plus in contrast to some of the ships that we've seen from Falcon to Lacey, there's no loose wires hanging down nor is there any rust blemishing the cockpit. And remember, this is coming from Lacon's cheapest hauler and second cheapest ship overall with the DBS being the only ship that Lacon make that's cheaper. And even so, they still put more effort into interior design than Falcon de Lacey. Yes, the canopy is highly exposed, but it's not like most people will be attempting to dogfight in the Type 6. If you do get into a scrap, in most cases the enemy will only see the rear thrusters anyway, as the best course of action is to run for the hills, run for your life. It may not be the prettiest ship from the outside, but as the view looking out can be spectacular, if you're in the right place and the right time, it's not the end of the world. And as always, there's also a reasonable amount of paint options to spruce things up and some ship kits if you want to get away from the standard boxy shape. Given this ship's name, it's pretty obvious that this ship was designed for combat. Oh wait, no, no, hang on, that's wrong. It's designed for trading goods and it's reasonably equipped for this, if a little underwhelming. Without a shield, you can cram 114 tonnes of cargo into the ship, but it doesn't leave you room for anything else, like, for example, a fuel scoop. It's great transporting a full hold of cargo, but it won't do you much good if you get stuck in the black with no way to top off the tank. That being said though, if you do like the idea of transporting high value rarities across the stars, given the potential jump range of the Type 6, it can earn you a decent chunk of credits. Although you'll probably want to upgrade the thrusters and give them a touch of engineering, since pirates generally won't see a Type 6. They'll see a bullseye. And let's be honest here, you probably want to keep your bulkheads intact, you you paid a decent amount of money for them. So being able to run away is something you probably want to invest in. Its base shield strength isn't exactly great either, it's on par with the Eagle, so it's best not to be sitting around and finding out how much your opponent wants to test your defences. As far as mining goes, the Type 6 is decent for low volume strip mining. It's manoeuvrable enough to get between tight gaps, but the lack of anything larger than a class 1 hardpoint really lets it down, since you won't be able to core mine anything. But for stripping tritium and other materials from a hotspot, I can happily while away a few hours in the Type 6 for this. If you do happen to have a few beers and decide it's a good idea to take this ship out for combat, you're either brave, stupid, or just a little bit drunk really. It's got the same weapon configuration as the Sidewinder of two small hardpoints, and as much as I love the Sidewinder, the Type 6 is lacking that tight convergence and it's nowhere near as manoeuvrable, which makes dodging incoming fire much tougher. 
position of the hard points isn't ideal either. It's probably worth mentioning though that the insurance on the frame is pretty cheap at a shade over 50,000 credits, so if you do screw it up, you're not gonna break the bank unless you're also carrying a cargo hold full of low temperature diamonds. You've also got the other unlikely role that this ship can perform well, exploration. As already mentioned, the jump range isn't bad and the Type 6 is ideal for rare commodity trading loops since the profit seems to stack well over a distance, but the jump range of the Type 6 is a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. 50 plus light years is doable with engineering and stripped back components, plus you can fit a size 5 fuel scoop and all of the other toys an explorer would potentially need when out in the black. And thanks to its small width and length, it's not bad for skimming planets for organic sources, even if it has an appearance that indicates the aerodynamic properties are that of a bus. Cost-wise, you're looking at just over a million credits to purchase, and for cargo running, it's probably the best option within that price bracket. The next ship, as far as I can tell, that has a similar capacity is the Asp Explorer, which can take an additional 16 tons, but it's also 6 million credits, which in the early stages of your career is a fair old wadge of cash, and a considerable investment over the seemingly budget offering that the Type 6 is. So in conclusion, the Type 6 isn't good to look at, it should probably lose a bit of height so it'll fit on a small pad, and it's probably not for everyone. If you're in the late stages of your career with several billion in the bank, you'll probably overlook the Type 6 as you'll be able to afford other medium ships with a greater cargo capacity like the Crate or the Python. But that being said, if you're starting out, the Type 6 is a proposition that's well worth looking into to get your trade rank up and some money in the bank. Also, in addition to this, if you want to explore the remote parts of the galaxy without using one of the standard choices of the Phantom, Aspex, DBX or Anaconda, you could do a lot worse than the Type 6, especially given that enormous canopy giving you a view to look out into the cosmos from the comfort of your seat. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Type 6, hopefully I've been fair to it. I'll see you all in the next review, and in the meantime, enjoy whatever it is that you get up to, and if you're a space trucker, keep on trucking. Also, like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that. 07 to you all. Thank you.